Hi lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my loves. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. I did want to put out a video as I always do every year at the end of the year for the 2024 predictions. This is astrological events, uh, Depending on what you're rising, I highly encourage you guys to listen to your rising as well as your sun so that you guys can get a better overall view of what you can expect for this 2024. I will go into the rising signs and the astrological alignments that will be happening. I want to wish every single one of you guys happy and brightest of blessings this coming new year, 2024. May all the blessings be bestowed upon you health, prosperity, love, finances, career, and success. Let's get into it. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my loves. Here we are, as promised, like you guys are used to if you've been following us for a while. We do the 2024, well, we're doing the 2024 predictions for the new year. This is something we do at the end of every year so that we know more or less what we are embarking into the new year. So this year, obviously going into 2024, we're going to go into what you can expect, what themes you're going to be dealing with for out or throughout the year of 2024. I highly encourage you guys to listen to your rising as well as your sun so that you can feel like it is more personal. Um, we're going to be going through the astrological alignments and changes that are happening. So I do want to wish every single one of you guys happy holidays, happy new year. I wish nothing but the best for you guys. May all the blessings that the universe has be bestowed upon you and your family. We are beginning here, of course, as always with Aries. We're starting with Aries, Aries rising. Uh, like I said, listen to your rising and your sun. All right, so we're going to do the astrological alignments for each of the rising signs. Then we're going to get into the tarot part, which is the 12 month cycle. What you can expect with the tarot cards. OK, so let's get into the planetary alignments and what's happening for this new year of 2024. Aries, you are embarking on a journey. You are having your north node in your sign, Aries. You will be the main character figuring out what you want and going towards your destiny, having to take accountability as well. This will happen in your first house, a new chapter. But when dealing with Nord notes, um, it is about being your authentic self. You may be challenged in showing your softer side because of your independence, right? Aries is known for being extremely independent. You will find strength in that vulnerability. So this year uh, for 20 or beginning 2024, uh, it's going to be very important for you to tap into that softer side of you. Why? Because we have Chiron here as well in your first house. Um, Chiron will be there in the North Node in March. Uh, with these two in your first uh, house, you're learning about your insecurities, but you're also healing your feeling of inadequacies, something you'll be working on. Uh, no longer feeling like you have to protect yourself or carry a mask that you are finding is safe to just be who you are. And what comes to mind is the wounded child um, in you doesn't need to be making decisions, uh, whether it's acting out in relationships or no longer allowing the wounded part of you to act based on survival mode. This is where a lot of realization will happen for you. North node means south node is in your opposite sign. This indicates relationships or partnerships um, for some of you. Uh, you're coming out of relationships where you guarded yourself, where as Chiron is helping you heal and become softer and allow people in. Um, as you guys can see, Chiron is the wounded you know, the wounded healer. So there, it being in your first house, Aries, it is about being 
true to who you are, your authentic self. Um, and of course, eclipses is happening in the axis of self and others, right? Because your north node is going to be in your main uh, in your main sign, the first house, and uh, counter opposite of that is the south node in Libra, which is to do with relationships and with others. So this will propel. Uh, remember, these are faded events where it is. Um, entering and exiting because it must be for your greater good. So pay attention to what people are showing you around this time. This year you're stepping into your worthiness and knowing um, your needs and knowing that you deserve to receive and get those needs met. You will be working on codependencies, uh, issues or habits that you have around that Um whether it's a habit of having the need to save a partner, this will no longer be the case. For those of you guys that are single, this eclipse will be faded event. Um, a partner may come in around this time who will help you grow and expand. But the key here, Aries, is learning not to make it only about the relationships, okay? Or losing yourself in relationships. All these themes will be accelerated for you guys around the eclipse uh, time. Uh, eclipse season and this will happen uh, for you guys in March uh, March the 25th there is an eclipse in Libra this means if you have any playment uh, placements at five degrees Aries this will be strongly felt by you guys Libra is south note so certain connections you've outgrown you're taking charge of your life and you will experience a spotlight in connections um, in connections that no longer work for you or habits in relationships that you will become aware around this time. In April 8th, the next eclipse is the solar eclipse at 19 degrees Aries on the north node. Solar eclipse means new chapter, a new start, and gains. There can be something that has to do with you and your identity, visibility, as well as accountabilities about or surrounding bad traits, habits, and healing. More than anything, it's about healing in this theme for you. Stepping into your most powerful era, um, Aries. Now, in October the 2nd, we will experience the solar eclipse at 10 degrees Libra. This is a new start. Trust your instincts when it comes to connections. If you're being called to let go of certain connections, do so. It is necessary around this time. It's important not to hold on to things. Uh, it's important not to hold on to things that no longer serve you, Aries, okay? Uh, the next eclipse is uh, something that we'll go into in the following year, uh, 2025. But it will happen or it will give us a glimpse in the eclipse that will happen in September 17 in Pisces. Now, for you, this is your 12th house. Mars, your ruler. As we know, Mars moves quickly into the signs, um, into all the signs. But we will look into Mars' uh, bigger picture or the journey that it will take in 2024. And Mars will start its year in Sagittarius and make its way to Leo. This indicates your ruler will start the year in your ninth house of travel, higher education, and end the year in the fifth house, which has to do with children, creativity. The theme, um, the theme here is illumination, where... We will have the courage to be seen, Aries. Um, Aries is known as an independent and go-getter, but it's about being seen completely in your authenticity. Yes, your strong traits, but also you will be embracing your softer energy, um, your more authentic energy, right? Before we become guarded, before we become tainted. That's the energy that you're stepping into, Aries. Uh, the majority of the year, your ruler's going direct. Uh, you're moving forward. Things will align and momentum will pick up. However, a slightly deviation may happen um, from that pace when your ruler Mars stations retrograde in December 24 in Leo. And it will re-enter uh, Cancer. <clears throat> and it will re-enter Cancer early in 2025. 
When it comes to retrogrades, they change the direction rather than being concerned with the external world. We are concerned with our internal world, more passive than active. So at the end of the year, you can be more contemplating certain past hobbies, how you like to inspire uh, joy and creativity. Some of you around next holiday season can be contemplating your dating life, your intimacy life, um, how you can heal from past. Uh, oh, sorry. You can also hear from past flings and crushes from the past. This is a part of the South Node in Libra as well as Mars retrograde in your fifth house. It's not about outside noise. It's about you. So you hear from the past, it may seem inviting, uh, but it's asking you to internalize what you learn from those connections. Now, Jupiter is in Taurus from January the 1st all the way to May 25th. Uh, in May 25th, it will be moving into Gemini. Um, however, for you, it's moving through your second house, which means you will start to earn within the first portion of the year. This can also mean um, that you may also spend more. Keep that in check. Not to overspend more than necessary the beginning of the year. There can also be this transit where you can be glowing up. Your value uh, can be heightened. Your confidence can grow substantially in this process. Promotions, new streams of income, as well as because Jupiter and Uranus is, is aligning in April, this can bring unexpected lucky breaks financially for you. Uranus is all about unexpected surprises. In May 25th through December the 31st, 2024, Jupiter enters Gemini in your third house. Jupiter doesn't necessarily like to be in Gemini, so the blessings can feel a little bit small or a bit stagnant, um, or for some, uh, may seem like Jupiter's not really giving you a lot of blessings. Um, this will bring a lot of talking. Uh, this will sextile North Node in your first house. Conversations about clarifying who you are. Uh, this is very gossipy type of energy. You can feel more popular, however, but be discerning when it comes to the energy of those around you. You can be communicating more with neighbors or siblings as well as articulating your desires. You are using your voice to advocate things or causes that you support allowing yourself to be heard. Now, by June, Jupiter trining Pluto in your 11th house, you are entering a and entering a transformation when it comes to your friendships and dreams. You can find that your friendships are going through transformations. Um, some can also, or some friendships will be coming to an end for some of you. Um, but also Pluto's energy is obsessive. So be mindful with new connections or new people coming into your life as this can bring a bit of tendencies of people that are a bit obsessive um, or it can also draw in a bit of secret hater energy. So just be mindful around that time frame. Now, Saturn will be in your 12th house in Pisces um, to close a toxic cycle of bad habits. Some of you are becoming sober this year. Straight up, we're going to keep it 100% mental health with Chiron energy. You're being pushed to make peace with your demons. Saturn and Pisces in 12th house uh, square off with Jupiter in your third house in Gemini. Mind, um, mind which is the 12th house of conscious mind, uh, mental health is key here. Now, Pluto will be in this dance between Capricorn and Aquarius. Pluto's journey starts going back into Capricorn, wrapping up a journey that happened since 2008. This is for you regarding career. So you could have transformed this area of your life. Not always an easy energy. Obviously, Pluto is death. It is the transformation. And you're closing that cycle. Um, if you have any Aries placements between 29 degrees, you will definitely experience this in the final square being asked to transform completely. But 29 degrees can also signify a grief energy, not necessarily a death, although um, it's not completely a no. For some of you guys, you may already have gone through some type of grief. For others of you, on a grander scale of things, it could just be uh, going through this period of 
being able to look back and seeing how much or how far you have came, all the transformation and everything that you have gone through within this cycle. Um, but we can experience this in order to rebuild. Okay, my lovelies. All right, my lovely Taurus, here we are with your predictions for uh, Taurus rising for 2024. There is a lot happening, you guys. Major expansion of owning your confidence and seeing your own value with Jupiter transiting your first house. And then in May 25th, Jupiter will be going into Gemini and its detriment in Gemini. Uh, but for you, it does expand and bless you and blesses your second house with has to do with finances, improvements and more opportunities with Jupiter entering this sector of your second house. It's also how we value ourselves or craft and skill uh, set to. So the more you believe in yourself, the more others will see your value. And this is something you're going to be working through and you're going to be experiencing. The problem in this with Jupiter in the second house, it expands both ways, you guys. So money will expand, but it might expand your expenses as well. So try the best you can to keep an eye on that uh, or keep an eye on not overspending or living above your means. Mercury rules Gemini. So some of you are becoming more analytical about how you spend your money. For others, you may be looking into investing around this time. Now, Jupiter and Gem uh, Gemini will be training Pluto in Aquarius in June 2024. For you, this will be in career, in your career houses like the 10th house career and public persona and second house of finances. Some of you can get a new job, get new opportunities that allows you to level up. Pluto, the planet of transformation for some, uh, going into a brand new industry that you are unfamiliar with. Get out of your own way through this process, Taurus. It's going to be very important to keep um, an open mind with the opportunities that come to you. Maybe opportunities that come that you're not necessarily very apt at or perhaps uh, maybe something you haven't really tapped into. But don't discard it just because it's unfamiliar territory. Uh, it is reminding you to embrace this new energy, even if it may seem unfamiliar to you as it can be a uh, blessing in disguise. Now, Jupiter and Gemini will square off with Saturn in Pisces. This will happen in August and December. This could be a time where you can feel your finances being pinched or more expenses um, may come up and energy of construction or uh, sorry, uh, energy of being constructed. Saturn's energy, uh, why it's important to manage for a rainy day. You can feel pressured by your friends because Saturn in your 11th house and you can also feel pressure regarding a certain lifestyle. This can be in many different ways for a lot of you guys. Um, the bigger picture here is, again, be practical. Uh, sometimes when we start to make more money um, and we start to grow and we start to expand, a lot of expansion is necessary in order for us to continue expanding. And in this process, sometimes if you're not keeping an eye on making sure that you are being responsible and that you're not living above your means, um, it can be beneficial instead of having to deal with the consequences of around this time where you feel a bit restricted, where you feel like uh, money might be a little bit tight in this uh, transit for you guys. So again, be mindful in that. Um, and again, like I said, some of you guys can be feeling uh, pressure regarding a certain lifestyle or a certain lifestyle of those around you or people around you because Saturn in your 11th house um, friendships and societal pressures. Uh, this doesn't have to be financially. It can also indicate like just feeling the pressure of, as an example, family, friends are getting married and you're not. So you may start to feel the pressure like society um, and what they may think, et cetera, et cetera. So try the best you can to be true to yourself in this process. Now, Pluto and Capricorn, January in your ninth house, belief system, this is travel and academia. Um, then in January 20, it will re-enter Aquarius and then dips back into Capricorn um, around fall, then shifts 
into Aquarius again for the long haul. You're stepping into this transformational energy in your career. For some of you, you have outgrown your career in some way. Uh, with eclipses in Libra, your sixth house, some of you are quitting a job. Uh, for some, you can do your job or you're feeling like you could do your job in your sleep and there it like you're seeing it as just time wasted you're not really being challenged so there is an overwhelming feeling of wanting to expand or the pressure of expanding or looking around to see what's out there like i said uh, for some of you guys quitting a job even if you've been there for 15 20 years in that industry is still highlighted here and it's still very probable um because of this transit so um Again, everything that has to do with expansion. And for some of you guys, you're seeking something more challenging. Uh, for others of you, you're stepping into your power. This is also reputation or, or the reputation house in the 10th house. Some of you may be stepping up uh, with Uranus in your sign and Pluto in the top of your chart, maybe rallying into a leadership position or awaken of some sort in order to move into humanitarian beliefs um, that you see and rebel against, what you feel is unjust. Uh, for a lot of you guys, you're going to be feeling this, like I said, humanitarian type of energy where you are really leaning towards the causes that you truly believe and support. Um, and this will uh, inevitably push you to expand or to open yourself up to the possibilities of leadership type of roles. Keep in mind, Pluto is a generational planet. Um, so for some of you, you will not experience all of these changes in the beginning of the year. It will, however, increase as it continues its journey in Aquarius. Now, South Node in Libra, your sixth house, you are letting go of some position and awakening into your 10th house of career. You will be stepping into your power and being able to enforce your boundaries and go out of your way uh, to go up the ladder. This will be amplified in the eclipse season for you guys. Uh, we're having eclipses in March 25th. This is a lunar eclipse in Libra. Having aha moments in the daily routine in your job or daily uh, routine, like I said. North Node in Aries, this is your 12th house. Some Taurus may be already um, be feeling a bit more lonely or experiencing almost the feeling of like loneliness. And this is because you're being more choosy with your energy, with the North Node being here. You are aware of what you need to let go of to grow. Um, what is it that you're holding on to around this time? How can I... Or how can you no longer self-sabotage? With Chiron and Aries in your 12th house, you are working on your fear of being alone. I feel for some of you guys, you have already been going through this energy. Um, and it's working through the fear of, or what you consider, right? A fear of being alone. Um, through this process, you are being able to tap into your power and healing that aspect in order to continue expanding. Lunar Eclipse in Pisces, this is going into next year. Now, the North Node enters Pisces and South Node enters Virgo in 2025, which for you, it's about friendships or new friendships, attracting like-minded people. Um, basically, what they're telling you here is keep your standards high, Taurus. You will be surrounded with like-minded souls, uh, there are contractual souls or connections coming in for you around this time, but it's important. It's very important to keep your standards high. Again, with that feeling of a bit feeling lonely, you don't want to, you want to be discerning of the people that you allow into your life. Why? Because you've been going through this journey of knowing your self-worth and around this time, uh, people are stepping in and they are coming into your life that are predestined. You guys have to keep in mind that when we talk about eclipses, this is not just something, you know, ordinary. This is fated events that happen in our lives. So again, very important to keep that in mind uh, for you, Taurus. All right, my lovely Geminis, let's get into your forecast for Gemini Rising 2024, what you can expect 
for this new year. Now, Jupiter in Gemini in your first house. Jupiter doesn't like to be in your sign. <laughs> Don't take it personal, Gemini. But it is in its detriment here. When it enters your sign, um, you may feel like you've been working really hard and nothing has turned out in your favor. And that's going to change Gemini. Geminis who will feel the benefic blessings of Jupiter the strongest are those who have Gemini placements between 0 to 21 degrees. Now, Jupiter will enter Gemini in May 25th all the way to December 31st, 2024. Jupiter will be transit, uh, transiting Taurus from January to May 25th uh, before it goes into Gemini. And this is the final house, right? The 12th house. This is everything to do with the hidden house. You've been closing cycles and releasing a lot of your luck. Um, a lot of your luck, sorry, releasing a lot is what I meant. But a lot of your luck will come through letting things go, Gemini. So what do I mean by this? If you've been going through difficulties or you've been struggling with connections, with relationships, partnerships, with that job that you're just sick and tired of, whatever situation it is that you've been very hesitant to let go, um, that's why you've been experiencing a lot of resistance or a lot of blockages in that area. Why? Because your blessings are going to come in the moment you're able to release these things, the, the moment you're able to be courageous and just let go or surrender to the process. Um, and like I said, this is releasing certain connections. Uh, it's uh, emphasis in shedding things that no longer serve you. You could have gotten into spirituality. Uh, you could have felt like you were a bit locked away or you were in a, a bit of a hibernation cycle. Uh, major healing and withdrawing energy is something you've been experiencing or will be experiencing. The universe cannot bless you unless you make space. So um, being able to let go is also you're pretty much preparing yourself to receive the blessings that are coming in. Stop holding on to things and just let them go. You are breaking cycles. You are releasing. It could be as simplistic as maybe you find yourself like cleaning your closet and you start to pull out clothes and you're like, hey, wait a minute. I don't really wear this shit anymore. Let me toss it out. Um, you're not really thinking that that's something major, but on a subconscious level, the reason why you're doing that is because you are cleaning house. You are letting go of things that no longer serve you, that are keeping up space and that are preventing preventing you from receiving more blessings. So again, it could be, like I said, really, it, it could be as simplistic as releasing clothes or throwing clothes away or donating clothes. For others of you, it could be releasing friendships or connections, relationships, that situationship, you know, you're, you've had it. And Jupiter in your 12th house, it's releasing self-sabotaging habits as well. So do not fear solitude because this will lead you to your biggest breakthrough in April. When Jupiter aligns with Uranus, spiritual breakthrough, tapping into your gifts, aha moments that you're going to be able to really capitalize on that are really going to open you up. Now, 12th house, um, this is, like I said, the house of secrets. And when Jupiter goes into your sign May 25th, you're getting ready to make it visible. Remember that. So what do I mean by this? Around this transit, you may be doing certain things that are behind the scenes that are going to lead you to bigger things in life but you're keeping it under wraps right now this could even be connections that come in this could be relationships that start to form for some of you guys um that you're keeping it hidden you're you're kind of protecting it um though you may not do it consciously on a subconscious level you're tapping into this energy and it's telling you you need to be private about certain things. So you may find yourself connecting um, or starting certain things that you're trying to keep, not necessarily trying to keep hidden, but that you're not making it a public display. And coming out of that, um, you're basically getting ready to come out to it and make it visible. So I'll give you guys a, a very quick um a very quick um, example. So it could be almost as as an example, going through or working through some type of project, right? Something that I've done in the past 
where I wasn't necessarily like I didn't really care what people would think or what they would say. I was just it just seemed so important to me that I was keeping it under wraps until I was ready to put it out into the universe, put it out on display or make it public. And once I was able to basically complete that and make sure that it was just the way I wanted it, then I came out and made it public and let, and made it known. And that project for me was an amazing experience and the blessings that came from it, I am still reaping those rewards. So again, it could seem something like that or it can feel something like that. Like you're, you're not necessarily doing it on purpose, but something may be coming up around this time that you feel like it's just too important to, you know, just just put it out there and you will do so when you're ready is what I'm saying. Now, because Jupiter will be in your first house, the house of self and identity, a lot of Geminis have gone through a breakup or you're going through this journey of finding who you are, letting go of toxic people, habits, etc. For some of you with Jupiter in your 12th house before going into your first house, you can feel or could have felt a bit dark, a bit, a uh, bit disconnected. Um, and once it goes into your first house, you will be recharged, Gemini, having hope and optimism. You're coming out of this hermit era, so to speak. You will be feeling more confident, more empowered. June 3rd, 2024, Jupiter in Gemini will trine Pluto, who just entered Aquarius. So what does this mean? This is your ninth house and it highlights going on a quest it can indicate travels for you guys anything could happen around this adventurous time july jupiter will, will sextile north node which is your 11th house so be open to share um what it is that you do put yourself out there you need to vocalize what it is that you want with the north node in aries also has to do with friends and healing taking a uh, place around this time this can also be reconnecting with people from your past but this can also indicate important friendships coming in as well new friendships for a lot of you and this could be people that are coming into your life almost as a uh having a purpose could be soulmates could be people that come into your in, into your vicinity that have the same goals or aspirations or that have the same commonalities as you that will come into your life and empower you and help you and guide you through this process. So very beautiful energy here. Now, August and December, Jupiter and Gemini square off in Saturn, um, which is in Pisces. This has a lot to do collectively, but individually it will transit your 10th house career public persona. It's important, important through this process to be discerning. Um, it could be something to, for some of you guys could have something to do with sharing something or oversharing something that is not favorable for your professional reputation, as it can indicate a challenge around the freedom that you are craving versus the responsibility that is weighing you down uh, in regards to career. But it can show up in different ways for a lot of you. For others, it can be that you feel you're spreading yourself thin overall. And the theme here is what's feeling really good versus responsibility. So try to keep a balance on that. Now, Mercury, your ruler, planet of communication, because it transits every sign, as you guys all know, uh, throughout the year. But you want to pay attention to the bigger picture of Mercury. Now, why is that? Because, you know, January 1st, it stations uh, direct at 22 degrees in Sagittarius. So pay attention to you here, or I should say pay attention to who you hear from around the end of 2023, meaning around this time, going into the beginning of the year. You want to pay attention to people that reach out. Why is this? Because they may be significant for your 2024. Because it governs the section of one-on-one -on -one relationships and partnerships. And at the end of the year, on November 25, uh, Mercury goes retrograde on that same exact portion of the sky. And there will be something happening that is almost feeling like it comes full circle. Okay? So, again, 
keep in mind who reaches out to you, Gemini, around the end of this year, the beginning of next year, because it may create a theme where you it will not be the last that you hear from them and they will play an important role throughout 2024. Now, a lot of Geminis are working really hard at something with Saturn and Pisces in your 10th house. Saturn, the planet of restriction, trying to make something happen. Keep it, <clears throat> keep at it and you will be rewarded. Jupiter and Gemini will be the luck that you need. Some of you may be having, uh, for some of you, huge pressure from a boss, from an authority figure. This will, however, help you level up with Saturn in Pisces in the 10th house. Don't cut corners or do anything shady, Gemini. And I do want to really emphasize on this as it can affect uh, your reputation. It's about being intentional about the things that you do in secret as these things can come out in the open around this time. So no fuckery for you guys um, around this time, okay? Because like I said, Saturn is a, it's the karma planet. And when it is in a position, the way it's going to be uh, in this sector for you, it can backfire very quickly if you try to do shady things. So again, keep that in mind. Now, North Node in Aries, your 11th house, and South Node in Libra, your 5th house. South Node in Libra, you may be releasing party friends or connections that are setting you back or... Uh, for some of you guys, you're over situationships, like I said, no longer dealing with things that are distracting you, no longer doing things for the sake of just doing it, or um, you're searching and looking for things that are more meaningful, connections that are bringing something to you. Those themes will be amplified around the eclipses of March 25th, which is the lunar eclipse in Libra, South Node. You can start to see habits, party themes, letting go of things that are distracting. Now, around April 8th, solar eclipse in Aries, 11th house. Pay attention to who you meet or who you connect with around this time. Collaborators who um, may want to uh, reach out to you that you may have networked in the past may be reaching out to you around this time. Now, October 2nd, solar eclipse in Libra, south node, um, a start, but also comes with endings, obviously. Um, so let go, stop holding on to things around this time. On September 17th, the north node in Aries is so close to the full moon in Pisces that it creates a lunar eclipse. This eclipse, uh, sorry, this eclipse is a foreshadow that will be playing out for you guys in 2025. Important because the North Node is entering Pisces in 2025 and South Node is entering Virgo. So these are angular houses for you guys. You're going into, um, you're going to be basically the main character uh, for the coming eclipses. A lot of it is going to be around career for you guys. Um, Gemini. Now Neptune is transiting Pisces, which is your 10th house. <clears throat> this can lead or feel like not being able to see your career clearly for some of you guys not wanting to deal with it. Geminis that will feel this the strongest will be Geminis from 25 degrees to 29 degrees. Um, because you will have Neptune square this year. Neptune may be stepping into spirituality for some of you guys, stepping into a career um, that you may you may be struggling to create boundaries or struggling uh, for some of you guys, even like in the past, maybe you've struggled with escapism. Neptune's energy can be murky water. So make sure to be grounded through this time, Gemini. <clears throat> Hello, my lovely Cancer Risings. Let's get into your predictions for 2024. Now, you will be experiencing the need for expansion as well as contract, uh, contrast, sorry, uh, contrast as well as um, within this year. For you, this is indicated with Jupiter in Taurus and then going into Gemini for for you, this is expanding or expansion in your 11th house of community and your 12th house of solitude. From January 1st to May 25th, Jupiter will be in Taurus. You can find the need to communicate, 
to network with colleagues. It's about expanding and making sure that you are collaborating or connecting with those around you. You will be called to shed the past because you are the sign of the past and nostalgia. Pluto energy can be dark, but you are refocusing on your future and your dreams, Cancer. On May 25th, Jupiter enters Gemini. However, Jupiter doesn't like being in this sign because it is at its detriment. In your 12th house, the hidden house, you will feel inclined to go within. After you have gone through Pluto in your 7th house, a lot of you are pulling your energy and it's like you've seen, um, it's almost like you guys have seen what you need to see out there, right? And you need some time to process, to go within, to take care of you, basically. Uh, you're going inward, Cancer, and you obviously are ruled by the moon. So honor those cycles that are coming up around this time. Sometimes going within leads to your biggest expansion. And foreshadow Jupiter enters your sign in 2025. And it's also at its exaltation. So what does this mean? Think of it as this year Jupiter will be in a house that it's not necessarily comfortable in. Um, but the following year, you're going into your sign where it's exalted. So it's giving you that Jupiter luck juices, right? Think of it as you will basically take off that year. Um, so your 12th house is the hidden house. So you can be working on something you're keeping under wraps around this time. And then you will make it public when Jupiter crosses the ascended um, with Jupiter in Gemini sextile north node in Aries which happens in July. You may be less accessible to the outside world around this time. Uh, basically, when they see you again, you're going to be the new version of yourself, okay? So you may be feeling right now like um, there is this process, right? And throughout 2024, you're going to feel like you're becoming more reserved. You're becoming more uh, protective of your energy. And the reason for this is because you are, there is a need to, to kind of, you know, go within right now because of everything that you have gone through, uh, everything you have experienced in 2023. And there is this almost like, think of it as in order for us to propel forward, sometimes we need to go a bit back to be able to pull on the, you know, on that resistance to get more, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To get more strength, to get more, uh, I, I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> but think of it as like launching an arrow, right? You have to bring it back in order to release it so that it can get more strength so that it can go further along. So I hope that I didn't throw you off there a bit with my brain fart. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Pluto will dip in your eighth house, leaving your sister sign. So it will be relieving the stress of you. But Pluto is asking for this long-term transformation with your shared resources with Jupiter in your 12th house, Cancer. So for a lot of you, this house um, in this house and Pluto in your eighth house, some of you are tapping into going deep, hidden knowledge. Uh, this is esoteric knowledge as well. Some of you guys are becoming spiritual. Saturn in your ninth house, a lot of you can be learning, wanting to go back to school, higher education. Others may be getting into astrology in a slow and steady way with Saturn in your ninth house. You're really wanting your faith and your dreams to be grounded because Saturn in the ninth house and Jupiter squaring in the 12th house, you can be experiencing like questioning your faith and embedded fears. So it's kind of like finding a deeper purpose or a deeper meaning. And because it's the ninth house, you're researching, you're wanting to learn, you're open, right? Open to uh to learning and experiencing new things so through this process chiron will square for those of you who have cancer between 15 to 23 degrees will feel it you will feel it the strongest this will be in your 10th house dealing with bosses or being triggered external influences that bring you back to your insecurities why because chiron is the wounded healer so for some of you guys you are your insecurities are being triggered around this time but work through it as this will heal where you may feel um 
or this will give you a lot of healing where you feel like you may be inadequate and with saturn transiting pisces your ninth house asking you to have faith to lean on wisdom chiron in your 10th house many may be asked to step in um many of you guys are being guided or will almost feel like you're falling into um these positions or situations where you're becoming a healer or working on healing uranus will be transiting your 11th house a lot of you can be connecting with bold eccentric types neptune will be transiting your ninth house can be very intuitive year um just use your discernment discernment sorry with saturn energy here cancer but again like i said um some of you guys or some rising are going to be a little bit more challenged and i fear for you cancer um i don't see it necessarily as a challenge i feel more than anything that it's the universe really preparing you um for 2025 because like i said there's going to be major transformations in 2025 for you guys so uh think of it as you know this is something that i hear some of my some of my clients that are in you know entertainment industry um but they have mentioned to me a few times like uh, you know i thought that being able to get to a point of success that i would heal you know that i would just magically heal uh the wounds that that i've been carrying and it doesn't work that way you can be in your pursuit of success and growing and achieving and if there are certain aspects to you that need healing when you're being challenged or when those wounds are being triggered um you can react in a very defensive way or you can react in a way where it's your defense mechanism kicking in so it is important to go within it is important to heal um and like i said you know it, it's very important that in this process of going within you know and and internalizing and figuring out what it is that you want and having a clear picture of what it is that you're working towards makes you more motivated even in days where you're just dragging your feet because you're exhausted or you're tired so again i feel that for you cancer risings 2024 is going to be magical in the aspect of you're going to find becoming more empowered going within as well as with your intuition as well as with the knowledge that you're gaining through this through this year and the people that are coming into your life and those that are exiting it because some are just not meant to some are just not meant to go on this journey of your growth or even to get to the point of success some are just not worthy or others are just they just don't deserve to be in that era of you and i feel like 2024 is preparing you for that all right my loves all right my lovely leos here we are let's look into your 2024 predictions leo risings so pluto in aquarius you are in the very beginning of this energy with this transit it is moving into your opposite sign for you it's entering the aspect of relationships and one-to-one -one connections for the planet um for you sorry for you the planet pluto is about power it's power that's earned when we are able to become a more empowered version of ourselves you can be experiencing learning things about people you know that you will never look at them the same way because pluto goes into deep secrets and information that is being revealed around those relationships some of you your partner may be going through something of a grieving process or a midlife crisis for some of you during this transit now remember pluto is the planet of death if you've been going through difficulty in your relationship, you may be looking into going to therapy around this time. Uh, you may feel like your partner is being a bit cold or distant. Now, Pluto also has dark aspects. You may want to be mindful as it can bring people who are obsessive, manipulative, or narcissistic. Pay attention to those red flags, Leo, around this time, especially those of you guys that are single. Sun 
your ruler it goes into every sign as it does every year but let's look into the eclipses because these are alignments with the sun and the moon and the nodes for 2024 the north node will be transiting your fellow fire sign aries you're tapping into your power in your ninth house you are trusting your intuition you are being asked to use your compass of your soul listen to what feels right to you leo with your south node in libra in your third house you are releasing your tendencies to go based on what makes sense to others for you you are trusting your intuition this year north node aligning with chiron fear around getting out of your comfort zone you're facing your fears leo basically uh 2024 is going to be very expansive for you and i feel that it has a lot to do with again facing your fears there is almost this anxiety or fear around uh, you know being challenged or being in a position where it makes you uncomfortable uh, for some of you guys, you know, Leos are always seen as very uh, assertive sign, right? A very assertive personality, the leader, basically. And I find it very interesting when oftentimes when Leo hasn't experienced a higher position or a higher authority position, and they're working themselves to get there, they kind of almost seem to psych themselves out in the beginning when they're intentionally trying to go up the ladder. So what do I mean by this? It's almost like you feel like you're about to seize the moment. And in that space, in that time, in that moment in time, it's almost like you freak yourself out and you're like, you know what, never mind. I thought I wanted this, but now I don't. Or you think about it and you're like, ah, I'm just taking on more responsibilities. You know what? I think I'm more comfortable here. So there is this tendency of, you know, not wanting to get out of your comfort zone. And this year, whether you're ready or not, the universe is going to be pushing you to be uncomfortable, Leo. And it's for your greater good. It's for your, you know, for your expansion for your growth for your success so again um really whatever it is that you don't want to do this year i would highly encourage you to get to it or to do it the sooner the better because you'll realize that you are stepping into this massive power of yours where you're becoming more assertive you're becoming more in control of your mind and being able to control the mind and being able to focus the mind you're able to achieve really anything leo so highly encourage you guys to do that now in march 25 lunar eclipse in libra south node third house this has to do with siblings day to day and of course gossip a lot of noise happening but you are contemplating what matters and what doesn't do anything for you anymore you're looking for more deep conversations no longer entertaining superficialities, Leo. Now, April 8th, solar eclipse in Aries, North Node, signals gain. It's reminding you of your strength. Keep in mind, Leo, you are the strength card in the tarot, right? So the solar eclipse is pushing you to be more direct. Call it like you see it, Leo. Be more empowered. And even, again, we go back to that of, you know, uh, your comfort zone even if you need to speak up on certain things that you know may trigger or may uh challenge other people's beliefs or ideas or could be even like um what's the word i'm looking for controversial if you feel passionate about it i encourage you to you know rough those feathers <laughs> ruffle those feathers why because Again, it's stepping into your power. It is speaking up on what you believe and calling it like you see it and being unapologetic about it. Now, on October the 2nd, solar eclipse in Libra, South Node, wanting to live your life, sorry, wanting to live your life and letting go of people pleasing tendencies. You're letting go of something to go into your next chapter. On September 17th, like I've been mentioning in the previous videos, um, we are experiencing a lunar eclipse now this is not in connection with the south uh south node and north node of this year but it is a preview of the south node and um 
north node that we'll be experiencing in 2025. So it's almost like, like I said, a foreshadow period, uh, a glimpse into what we can expect when the lunar eclipse happens in Pisces. This lands in your eighth house. It's giving you a preview of what your north node in Pisces will be. And it's emotional reveals coming to terms of where you're transforming. For some of you guys, you're grieving or feeling the grieving of the old version of who you were. Um, for others of you, shared resources. These are circumstances or situations that are going to be connected to shared resources like alimony, child support, um, issues, disputes, etc. Neptune will be also transiting this sector. It can affect romanticizing or idealizing, not being able to see clearly. Now, Saturn and Neptune transiting this sector, keep your eye on your finances, your billings, your finances overall. Um, again, this could be almost a preview of what you can expect or what houses are going to be um, playing out for you uh, in 2025, like I said, because that's what, um, we are having, uh, the lunar eclipse in Pisces, September 17, um, and going into 2025, that's when the North, the North Node and South Node change. So we will be having, uh, the South Node and North Node moving into Pisces and Virgo. So again, it can be giving you almost a glimpse of what you can, expect or the themes that are going to be coming up for you leos in 2025 now jupiter the planet of opportunity expansion and growth however it's still up to you to make those things happen okay this is something that i always tell my clients when we have jupiter in positions that obviously jupiter is the planet of expansion the, the planet of abundance of success right um when we have almost these celestial events that are happening that are making it beneficial for us to start a new project or to start a new business or to set out on a journey of creating more wealth and more finances or stabilizing the finances, it still takes for us to go out of our way to make it happen, you guys. Now, it this simply means that the universe is literally conspiring to help you push you towards that direction but in the grander scale of things you do have your free will and if you decide as an example you can have uh jupiter in a very lucky position and if you just decide to sit on your ass and not do nothing about it then guess what nothing will come from that right so again Jupiter is really bringing a lot of luck and a lot of expansion. So you really want to take advantage of that. Now, Jupiter will be in Taurus January 1st to May 25th, 2024. You will start to see the fruits and you will start to see fruits of your hard work and labor may be taking off around this time. Promotions are highlighted. You will start to get more attention in the workplace. You may be pushed to step up in a leadership role. If you run your own business, you will get a, a rise on order sales. If you're, wor if you're working in a company, you may be getting a higher position with more pay. The conditions are right for those of you guys that are wanting to change careers around this time. If you've been working hard and not feeling appreciated, Jupiter is about freedom and Uranus is about sudden change. With this Pluto change, you may also feel um, about wanting to do something different around April is a right time for you guys. I would highly encourage, like I said, for those of you guys that are wanting to, for those of you guys that are wanting to um, change careers, this is a perfect time to do so. As Uranus aligns um, with Jupiter, and this is about unpredictability, random opportunities, Jupiter is benefic, but Uranus is a shock, right? A surprise. Hone in that energy. The universe is giving you what you need, visibility, more attention around this, <clears throat> around this time for you guys. Remember, you can gain by being a little weird as well. 
you know, the reason I say this is because a very rebellious energy seventh house is also has to do with the general public. That's where your Pluto is. So others may have an intense reaction to you. You will shine, be true to who you are and go with the flow, Leo. Now in May 25th to December 31st, Jupiter will enter Gemini, your 11th house. This governs audiences. Um, so if you reach out, you will be extra magnetic. Some of you will be wanting to go um, to be more public, to do things that will connect you with uh, wider audiences. You can go viral around this time as well. You can be very well received. Invest energy in your professional network around this time. For many of you, you will be moving into careers um, to something that's more true to who you are or to who you want to be. And remember, 11th house is also about our dreams and our aspirations house. Some of you may be called to be a leader for a cause, uh, getting into politics. Uh, you're becoming a magnet around this time. Writing in public, speaking is something that's highly highlighted around this time as well. And August and December, Jupiter's in your 11th house. It will square Saturn in your 8th house. Some of you will be going through shakeups, divisions of income. Uh, some may be going through, like I said, some type of divorce or some type of settlement, some type of alimony, inheritance. 8th house is the house of death. So divorces, um, inheritances, like I said, um, or pressure on shared finances with your partner with Saturn due to your... Did, uh, do your diligence around this time as there can be certain type of delays. A lot of shakeups are happening here for you guys. Let's get into it. Now, Jupiter is in your 10th house of Gemini. It is in its detriment to the collective. But because you're rising, Gemini like you is ruled by Mercury. It provides a bit of a magic in your 10th house here in the house of career, visibility, prestige, and reputation. What this means is that it's going to be bringing to you expansion in your work and the efforts you have put into your work. You will start to see results of what a cycle of six years you've been working hard towards the 10th house, the very top of your chart, which is visibility. Six years ago in this cycle, it was at the bottom of your chart. If you work in marketing, social media, anything that draws in public or clients, customers, this will give you much more visibility and feel perhaps even going viral around this time. For some, it's bringing to you more connections with your industry. If you've been confused on your path or career with Jupiter and Gemini, you will start to see your career path start to fall into place. Major powerful time for networking a boosted time in sales, you will find that you will begin to be well received by the public. Last year, you came out of Saturn being in your sixth house, which added more responsibility, putting more pressure for some of you could have been experienced career changes around this time. But Jupiter in Gemini 10th house, there is a freeing feeling of energy. This is a lucky time to start something new. Capitalize on this energy. Word of mouth is very highlighted here as well. With this energy, it's bringing more visibility to your business or service you provide. Definitely, there's going to be more eyes on you. More people uh, can be talking about you around this time. But as you go into higher heights in your life around this time, this is also going to be bringing a bit of pressure because of the attention of work or growing. Uh, a thicker skin is going to be something that you're going to highly have to work through 2024. Because this placement also brings a lot of attention and we know it's not always good attention. They can be more nitpicky, more chatter, a lot of noise. So don't allow this to make you uh, want to keep hidden. This placement is about stepping into the light. Do not fear it or let it hold you back in order to expand. Sometimes we have to face our fears head on. It's important not to shut down if you really want to make the most with Jupiter, but be discerning, stay organized because your career is going to be busy in this house. For many of you, if you are unhappy in your career, you may make a major change uh, in, with this transit. Some may be even working abroad. Now, Mercury is your ruling planet, and because it goes into all the signs, obviously, as it does every year, but the important aspect is when it goes retrograde. And for you, for 2024, it will largely go into the fire signs, which for you is linked to your fourth house, your eighth house, and your twelfth house. 
sacred, mystical, and intuitive houses. When it's retrograde, it's going within. Not a time to start anything new around these retrogrades. January goes direct in your fourth house of roots. Fire is our creative essence, life force, energy. And because of Mercury, you can be so in your head. Um, so there is reflections that are happening going back to things you used to do or used to love to do in the past. Mercury will also be retrograding in April the 1st to April 25th, 2024 in Aries, your eighth house. This is around shared resources and assets. If you're married, you might uh, be looking into watching what goes in and what goes out. More like budgeting, if anything. Um, if you're single, you can be uh, tying up loose ends as it relates to alimony, child support, or inheritance. Some may be dealing with end-of-life affairs because it is the 8th house. And obviously, we know 8th house has to do with death and morbid energy. Um, some of you Virgos will be getting more into the occult, hidden knowledge, uh, etc. Now, Aries is the sign of self. So for some of you Virgos, you may be diving deep into where you feel unsafe, being your authentic self. Because the 8th house has to do with shared resources, some of you may be contemplating around what made you feel like it wasn't safe for you to receive. Um, so again, you know, 8th house does rule shared resources. And uh, because of this transit, you may be feeling you're going to be catching yourself like people trying to give certain things to you and it may bring about some triggers like uh, resisting or uh, not feeling comfortable in being able to receive so they are asking you around this time it is important to work through that to kind of look back into your childhood where in that timeline did you feel like it was not okay or maybe even you weren't worthy of receiving um this is something that is going to be playing out for you now mercury will go retrograde in august um 4th to august 28th 2024 in virgo and leo this brings up contemplation around self your vessel your authentic your aesthetic sorry getting to the root of what made you feel unsafe to be seen Triggers may come up because of your 10th house, reputation and visibility, and Leo, your 12th house, the unconscious, what exists in the shadow, and Leo, obviously ruled by the sun. It's about attention and visibility, but because it's in your 12th house in Leo, you feel better behind the scenes, not wanting the spotlight uh, because your 10th house will be highlighted the spotlight basically will be on you. Are you ready to take it? Do you even want it, Virgo? Are you ready for recognition? For some of you, you know, if you're ready, take it. And whether you're not ready, as an example, it's something that you have to work through, Virgo. It's something that you have to, you're being propelled to actually nurture that aspect and to find comfortability in discomfort so that you can be able to better be, um, to better expand and to be able to be seen and to be heard. Uh, so this is a theme that's going to be playing out for a lot of you guys throughout 2024. Now, like I was saying, um, for some of you, this, this will trigger fears. It's important when going through this to ask yourself, are you self-sabotaging? Are you keeping yourself small for people, for those around you, um, for yourself? And is it because you are fearing criticism um you know one of the things that i do tell clients when dealing with them and reading their birth chart and i often see um when they have uh such a very powerful and almost magnetic uh sign in their 12th house like you do in leo um this is you know it's kind of like the opposite this is a house where everything is hidden and because Leo thrives on attention, it thrives on, you know, it is the sun. So it, it's about working through those fears of attention or receiving. Um, and this is something that you're highly, highly being pushed to work through and to sharpen for this year. And again, it does connect to self-sabotaging mechanisms for some of you. Um, so it's important to work through it to not keep yourself hidden anymore. 
Yes, visibility and attention brings critique, but it can also bring to you your wildest dreams. What part of your life did you feel like it was not safe to be seen or um, to not be seen or you didn't feel safe and work through that because this is, like I said, something that is propelling you to outgrow this so that you can step into the biggest and higher version of yourself. Now, with, um, I was going to touch another subject. Let me see. Give me one second here before we move on. So Mercury will retrograde November 25th to December 15, 2024 in Sagittarius first uh, full circle moments for you this year, Virgo, something to do with your home or home life around this time that perhaps you're contemplating or throughout this year, you will be contemplating um, to actually make the move. So as an example, you could have in the beginning of the year thought about or perhaps juggled with the idea of moving or changing residency or something like that. And then around this time uh, with Mercury's retrograde, November to December, um, for some of you guys, you will actually take the move. You will actually make the move. Um, so again, uh, this time you actually move residence or make that move or shift or that change. Now, Jupiter will be expanding the most visible part of your chart, which is the 10th house. Fourth house is the roots with Mercury retrograding there, figuring out, um, being able to handle, figuring out if you're able to handle the attention or criticized, um, or being criticized and how you deal with that. It's about growing thicker skin, like I said, and figuring out what you're willing to do and not do with things that don't align with you anymore or with your beliefs and morals, etc. Now, the aspects of Chiron and Venus have to do um, with Venus, the planet of value, and Chiron is the planet of the wounded healer. With this energy of these aspects, because your 10th house is prominent this year for your success, it can be an amplifier of an amplifier of being criticized or feeling judged it can bring to you the feeling of wanting to hide but it's important not to let the wounded parts within you you must overcome this in order for you to fully be able to tap into the major expansion that you're going into virgo now themes you will be experiencing um through this 2024 will be major shadow self the eighth house is about Again, working through feeling comfortable or teaching yourself that it's okay to be able to receive or to receive help. Um, even when you're not asking, uh, you're worthy and you deserve it. So again, it's about dealing with the uncomfortabilities of receiving. North Node energy will be accentuated around the eclipse March 21st to April 8th and October the 2nd. These are eclipses that take place in Libra axis. <coughs> the sector of legacy <coughs> sorry you guys shared resources merging with the eighth house with the second with the second house that has to do with finances and possessions and within the eclipse of september 17 this is or will be a transition into the bigger theme moving into 2025 the lunar eclipse in pisces seventh house Full moon are revealers. They're bringing information or information will come out. Um, see it as the universe shaking you in the right direction. Some of you may find your person or a person around you uh, around this time that you will be seeing their true colors, basically. Saturn in this house can bring 
for some of you guys, it can bring marriage, commitment, but it can also test relationships if you can stand the test of time. Remember, 10th house is all about attention. Can your partner support your elevating into new heights? This is a time to observe who's trying to keep you small, Virgo. Pay attention to that. Saturn being in your seventh house, you may experience connections where the partner has uh, tendencies to... Uh, where the partner has tendencies to use alcohol or substance abuse as a form of escapism because of the Pisces energy. Saturn also brings delays for those of you who are single. When it comes to romance, keep your standards high. Do not settle around this time, Virgo, um, or play small. Saturn brings longevity and commitment in the end of this transit, but it can you know, indicate to us uh, where we really need to pay attention, meaning when you see red flags and obviously there are red flags for a reason, do not settle. Do not think that you're going to miss out on something because what's meant for you will never pass you by, Virgo. And this year, 2024, chances are you're going to meet someone that's coming into your life that is going to be much more stable. Remember, Saturn brings longevity and commitment at the end of this transit. It can also bring partners with Saturnian energies. They can be older or wiser in some shape, way, or form. For others of you, it can bring a partner that is financially stable. Jupiter will try your ninth house of travel and higher education as well. So Virgo, as you see, you have tons of of changes coming in for you this 2024. All right, my Libra risings, so let's get into your 2024 predictions. Now, a theme of power struggles within the family dynamic is something that you're definitely going to be experiencing. Perhaps they are not used to you having boundaries. South Node energy you will be experiencing in the year 2024. Pluto is still doing the dance of going into Aquarius and Capricorn. Being your fourth house, the theme is around releasing and shedding generational cycles and patterns of power struggles and how they've been affecting your family unit as well as observing how your upbringing and roots have shaped and molded your psyche and learning to relearn or recondition a new way of thinking. To help you continue growing, these Pluto placements will be strongly felt. If you do have Libra placements between 29 degrees, you will be having a Pluto transit. When it comes to Pluto energy, you are being reborn. It's about transformation. It's at the bottom of your chart, fourth house roots. And some, uh, some way, you have been taught that appearances are what's most important. And you're transforming this aspect of you. You are being reborn, tapping into your strength. You could have um, you could have been through some intense trauma, grief because there is strife surrounding your wanting to let go of these ideals, and maybe for some of you even cutting family out or people that have been extremely toxic in your life. Pluto will be in Capricorn from January, and it re-enters Aquarius January. January 20th. It stays there most of the year and returns to Capricorn September, October, and November. The wrapping up of this transformation around your emotional state, family dynamics, and relationships to your past. With Pluto entering Aquarius, some of you are going into what you want in regards to romance with North, North, sorry, North Node in Aries, your seventh house, and uh, Pluto entering your fifth house. Some of you are fundamentally transforming what it is that you're looking for when it comes to relationships. North Node in Aries in 7th house, you're wanting, um, <clears throat> you're wanting and craving more fun, you guys. You're taking your power back and that echoes into your 5th house themes, which is romance, flirting, creativity, and children. January through March 25th, Jupiter will be in Taurus, your eighth house. You can experience unexpected gain in the beginning of the year. Universe is getting you money flowing into your life, unexpected checks or unexpected ways. Uh, be open to receive and have trust and allow yourself to receive. If you're married, you're finding your voice to be heard. You're allowing your partner to support you. A uh, spouse may get an income boost around this time as well. Now, in April, Jupiter and Uranus uh, partner can get expected boost in money uh, with this energy inheritance. 
Your partner can get investments to skyrocket. They can win the lottery around this time. If you're single with Jupiter and Uranus, you can experience an unexpected inheritance that comes in uh, or that comes your way. Someone that may want to invest in you. Uranus is um, is expect the unexpected, basically. And you're getting unexpected money or support from others in that energy. Now, Jupiter enters Gemini and also Pluto creates a trine, linking your ninth house. You can be creatively expressing yourself. You can be expanding your horizons. If you have Libra placements between 0 to 21 degrees, this will be felt stronger. Energy of openness and gains around this time. Now, Saturn in Pisces in your sixth house, Neptune is also there. So you can feel random sensitivities, um, random dietary restrictions could have surfaced around this time and with Saturn in your sixth house you may be wanting to change your diet or become more fit uh you're wanting to check your habits Saturn is restrictions so for some dealing with the consequences of our bad habits you're going to be feeling busy pressures on responsibilities because it is the sixth house and Saturn puts pressure on where your time is going basically it's like time restricted or feeling like you don't have enough time now lunar eclipse in pisces is happening on september 17 you will be given a preview of what themes you will be dealing with for 2025 there may be some reveals in regards to health reveals in regards to work or around core uh, co-workers now north node in aries you may feel um you may feel more like asserting yourself um, where you are being a pushover at work because you take on others' responsibilities around this time. Now, Lilith enters Libra this year. Lilith is a rebellious and wild energy. Some of you may be taking Lilith's energy or invoking Lilith's energy and basically not taking people's shit no longer. Jupiter in Gemini 9th house, later portion of the year, you're expanding, you're traveling, seeking wisdom and spiritual uh, seeking because of the north north in your seventh house Aries south node in your sign Libra first house allowing the universe to show you who people really are around this time pay attention to that Libra all right my lovely Scorpios let's get into your 2024 predictions a lot of changes are happening here you guys Scorpio for you there is a lot of healing with the north node in Aries aligning with Chiron in your sixth house letting go of escapism letting go of drinking clearing your mind and healing your body for a lot of you you are changing certain behaviors it's constructive ways to heal versus um, what you've done in the past which is using these things to escape um, or taking basically you're taking charge of your life at this point as the sixth house is physical wellness as well as our day-to-day -day routines with north node in aries you're getting to work um not allowing things to fester this year you're really taking charge you will want to improve your health you're wanting to feel your best you will definitely be hustling this year you may be open to starting something new in your workspace through um you may You may be working through certain fears or overcoming fears to continue your growth around this time as well. South Node in Libra 12th house. Some of you have, um, like I mentioned, you know, in the past, you've had tendencies of escapism or self-sabotage through relationships. You are ending this this year. Um, I'm going to keep it 100% Scorpio. A lot of your self-defense mechanisms or a lot of self-sabotaging mechanisms that you've been accustomed to for a very long time, they're, you know, you're ending that in 2024. You are stepping into your baddie era, basically. Like, you're not taking shit and you're standing your ground and you're creating boundaries, but you're also learning to make yourself a priority. And this includes seeking or connecting with healthy relationships full of growth, respect, and you're no longer losing yourself in relationships anymore. You'll be letting go of unhealthy coping mechanisms. You're becoming direct about solving problems and getting to action. With Pluto at the base of your chart, you're taking action. Think of 2024 as basically your kick-ass era. With the 6th house and 12th house, 
It will be amplified around the eclipses. March 25th, lunar eclipse in Libra 8th. Um, Libra and April 8th, a solar eclipse in Aries. And October the second solar eclipse in Libra. Now there is one other eclipse happening in September 17th, but that is not on the notes. Now, what happens is that um, the lunar eclipse that is going to be happening in September 17th, which is in the sign of Pisces, um, it is so connected to the to the North Node that it will give us a preview. It's it, Think of it as a foreshadow energy of what you're going to be working on in 2025 or the themes that are going to be coming up for you in 2025. Um, and it's about, you know, <clears throat> allowing yourself to pay attention to what is coming up around that time, around September 17, that you can expect major growth around those themes in the following year. Now, North Node in sec, uh, sixth house is perfecting and honing your craft. Some of you guys will be hustling and grinding with the North Node in Aries. Aries is about taking charge and making shit happen, basically. Saturn in your fifth house, you really want, you're wanting to refine your craft. Some of you will be nudging or being experienced, um, being nudged to take something you love with Saturn transiting here, the fifth house. It's also about dating. Be open to connections with Saturn in your fifth house. You might be dating people in business or older, as we know that um, Saturn, as we know that Saturn restricts, but with Jupiter in Uranus in your seventh house, definitely be open to connect with unusual people. For some of you, you may get into a serious relationship or you're really healing the aspect of losing yourself in relationships with Saturn here. It will help you realize that aspect and tendencies clearly. Um, others may be looking at your parting habits of some, of some sort and if it's serving you with the North Node in Aries 6th house, you will become more mindful of what is serving you and what isn't. Saturn and uh, Pisces in the fifth house, you're having a little less fun. You're becoming more serious about legacy. For many of you, um, you're taking a hobby and turning it into work, basically, with the North Node in Aries. It's supporting initiative around work, sixth house, and Saturn in the fifth house supporting or supportive around taking a hobby and turning it into uh, work or something that can turn uh, long term as you have delayed gratification. Um, Saturn in the fifth house rewards. It may take some time to come in. Um, and also you have to have discipline, obviously, with Saturn here. It's all about discipline. We know that. Now, some of you are getting your bag. May 25th, Jupiter will leave Taurus and enter Gemini. It's not the best transit for Jupiter because it is in its detriment here, but it does bring blessings based on the houses it's transiting. With Jupiter in Gemini, 8th house, you can receive from others. For some of you, you're learning new ways to make your money work for you. For others, you are benefiting from other people, um, from other people or working with people wanting to invest in you. Jupiter in Gemini, it will square Saturn in Pisces in August and December 2024. You may find someone who invests in you is trying to take charge in your of your creativity in some way uh, around this time as well. For others, disputes over shared assets, particularly involving children with Jupiter squared to Saturn. At the end of the, the year, with Jupiter transit this sector, be open to receive random checks in the mail, Random people wanting to take you out, wanting to treat you, wanting to bless you, basically. Um, be open to this. Uh, blessings will come to you through other people. Now, Pluto at the bottom of your chart, there can be power struggles around family with Jupiter and Gemini trining Pluto. Can be a year uh, to grow uh, your wealth as well in unexpected ways, real estate, alimony, or other investments that can grow. Jupiter in Taurus in the beginning of the year, your seventh house, be open to your prayers to be answered through other people. It's highly highlighted here and echoed with Saturn in your fifth house. 
or answering your prayers through lucrative projects. Jupiter and Gemini will move into your eighth house, making you a magnet, unexpected gains, merged assets, gifts, and people supporting you, basically. Uranus transiting your seventh house as well. Expect the unexpected with this, within relationships. Embrace eccentric types. They can inspire you and can start something new around this time, Scorpio. Now, Neptune transits uh, your fifth house. This is not the year of escapism for you. Some of you have, like I said, certain tendencies that with Saturn in this sector, you're asked to let go of those certain tendencies um, that make you numb or numb out from reality rather than allowing you to build towards your dream reality. So it's about self-discipline. Pluto transiting your fourth house. Some of you are moving through this transformative energy of getting to the psychological root of what molded you and what really... Um, striving to evolve from old familiar groups you've been in where you grew out of it already where you come from uh basically this energy of remembering where you came from what happened to you it's not your fault but with pluto evolving past it's your responsibility this 2024 so again it's very empowering energy for sure, Scorpio. All right, my lovely Sagittarius, let's get into your 2024 predictions. Now, prioritizing your inner child with Saturn transiting your fourth house, you can feel like your emotional center is more cynical this year in 2024. You have to make a conscious effort with Saturn in this sector as you will be more protective of your emotional state. You will be honoring your boundaries around what is detrimental to your mental health, Sagittarius. North Node in Chiron in the fifth house. It's about fun, self-expression. Some of you are saying no to things that you're not enjoying anymore. Protecting that lighthearted part of yourself. Um, sometimes we can go about uh, saying yes to things that we want to say no. And we say yes out of responsibility or out of what they may say or whatever, that is no longer the case for 2024. You are like, if I mean no, I'm saying no. If and I mean yes, I'm going to go through it. Uh, that simple. You're being un unapologetic about protecting your mental space. You will feel these themes kick up a notch around the eclipses, the lunar eclipse in Libra, March 25th, and the solar eclipse in Aries, April 8th, and the lunar eclipse in Pisces, September 17th which that particular one in Pisces, September 17th, will, will basically foreshadow themes that will go into 2025. And solar eclipse in Libra, October 2nd, um, all eclipses in Libra and Aries will accentuate how you will be expressing yourself for 2024. Is the energy of doing what makes you feel good. You're not showing up for social graces or appearances. You are being true to yourself this year, Sagittarius. Now, in September 17, like I was explaining, lunar eclipse in Pisces North Node does not enter Pisces South Node. Um, South Node does not enter Virgo until 2025, which will be more important of a nodal cycle for you guys. Um, 2025. However, uh, this is occurring this year, 2024 in September, which is a foreshadow energy with the eclipse uh, that happens around September. It lands 25 degrees Pisces. If you have later degrees in Sagittarius placements, you will feel the influence kick up around this time. Family tension or home tension can reach an apex around this time, and you need to set boundaries when it relates to or with Neptunian energy. Uh, could be having to do with substances, escapisms, things of that nature that eclipse on September 17. Pay attention to what comes up around that time, like I said, as those are important themes that will come up for you in 2025. Now, Saturn in your fourth house, you may be learning tools in order to regulate your emotions to a certain degree. With your ruler transiting your sixth house, with Uranus, you're open to change that helps your wellness. So for some of you guys, you are reaching out, finding ways of basically taking care of yourself and your emotional state. This could be like going through therapy or uh, learning new practices, meditation, that type of thing. 
Now, North Node in Aries in the fifth house, you want to pay attention to who comes in your life around this time. Uh, fifth house is the house of romance, passion. For some of you, you are igniting the passion that has been dull uh, lately. For others of you, um, put yourself out there with the ruler transiting Taurus, the physical body, and North Node in Aries, fifth house. Listen to your, to your body. That is the biggest message here. Like an example, if you get an invitation and it sounds interesting and you get excited uh, versus you get an invitation and your stomach sinks and you feel like throwing up, uh, pay attention to that. <laughs> the universe is giving you basically knowledge through your intuition. See it as your compass uh, around this time. Now, Jupiter in Taurus first person, uh, sorry, first portion of the year, your sixth house. Invest in feeling your best is what I can say. Okay, do things that make you feel alive and make you feel excited. It could be as simplistic as playing your favorite song. Uh, it can be as simple as doing a hobby or doing something that really excites you or relaxes you. Now, Saturn will transit your fourth house to solidify what makes you happy and what it is that you will and not what you will accept and will you not accept as it relates to your home and your emotional self. North node in the fifth house, be creative, have fun and prioritize your inner child healing here with Chiron um, that is stationed there as well. So it's about, you know, again, tapping into your creative outlook. It's about keeping yourself um, excited and remembering what it was like to uh, what it was like to have your energy when you were a child. Uh, seeing the, the world as this huge possibility, right? Before all the shit happened. So it's about tapping into that so that you can fully use it to your maximum potential. Now, uh, Uranus in your sixth house can be ups and downs in career as well as in health, where is if you are pay attention to where you're craving changes in these areas. So what I mean by that is, as an example, if you start to experience uh, around this time, um, you know, a toothache or something, maybe it's time to go check yourself. Uh, if you are experiencing that the routine of your business or the routine of your daily job is something that is just depleting your energy, maybe because of the people around you, try to integrate something new. Like I said, yoga or meditation that can help you basically ground yourself. It's important to take care of yourself, Sagittarius. Now, like I said, Neptune transiting your fourth house, you're creating boundaries and seeing family members or those close to you for who they really are. Uh, this can bring a lot of what's the word I'm looking for? Clarity regarding certain people uh, that perhaps have portrayed themselves a certain way and you are finally being able to see them really in their light. Uh, take it for what it is and don't make excuses anymore. If the universe is showing you they are shitty people, they're shitty people. Take it that way. Um, Pluto will continue the dance between Capricorn and Aquarius. And with Pluto, it's wrapping its transit in Capricorn. Uh, it is your journey of transformation of your own self-worth and what it is that you value. And it is connected to your finances. So again, I feel that this year for you, Sagittarius, it's going to be very important to make you a priority. Because when we value ourselves and it is connected to our finances, when we value ourselves, you're no longer allowing people to like lowball you. Whether it's lowball you in your energy, whether it's lowball you in romance, like that they're just breadcrumbing. If you value yourself and you know your worth, you're not going to allow any, um, you know, any mofo to just waste your time or to breadcrumb you. So again, I feel like there is this major theme for you guys uh, this year in 2024 about making yourself a priority and making your mental state and how you feel inside a priority. And then it will come out to the open and you'll be able to see transformation in those areas of value, right? And which is the second house going into the third house, people, neighbors, siblings, um, 
So again, pay attention to what the universe is revealing to you around this time. Now, Pluto is entering Aquarius for good this year. This starts a journey around transformation and empowerment in your mental space. Like I said, third house has to do with the mind. And the stronger you become, the more you know your worth, the more you value yourself, the more um, people are no longer going to have excuses, right, about being shitty to you. Uh, so again, it is very empowering energy, a lot of healing, uh, but a lot of empowering energy for you this year, 2024. All right, my lovely Capricorns, let's get into your 2024 predictions. A lot of, a lot of changes, you guys. Okay, Saturn in your third house, you are exerting discipline on what you will and not allow yourself to think as the third house has to do with the mind. If you are mean to yourself, Saturn in your third house, you will be realizing this and you will be paying attention to how you treat and speak to yourself. Um, and you are questioning where this is coming from. So for a lot of you guys, we all know Capricorns do have a tendency of being melancholic and have a tendency of like really uh, feeling very comfortable in dark themes or in dark state of minds. But this year, you're going to be questioning what it, you're going to be questioning basically where these belief systems come from. Is it something that was triggered because people constantly repeated that to you? Uh, and if so, you're definitely throwing that out and you are retraining yourself to think of yourself very differently. Now, North Node in Aries, you will learn to prioritize and protect your well-being uh, protect your peace and with with you you are a Capricorn a lot of people do rely on you and that energy of wanting to defend or protect oftentimes is focused on other people and this year you're stepping into the role of taking care of you Capricorn dealing with burnouts is something that is going to be coming up for you and I do want to highlight this because Think of it as you kept going in the past and kept pushing and you are realizing how poorly you've taken care of yourself. Um, with those changes or with the changes that this year is bringing to you, you're making yourself a priority with Pluto wrapping up in Capricorn. You had that tower moment already where you dug so deep in the reserves to keep producing and doing what was expected that now you realize how deep you dug and how empty you feel. You're being more protective of yourself and your well-being. This is something that is going to be um, highly highlighted for you guys. Now, you are, transfer uh, you are transforming and asserting yourself around family and boundaries. Why do we say this? Well, let me bring this a little bit more down. Your north node in Aries is in your fourth house. It's being fierced in order to find your peace. Now, I know this sounds weird, right? You're being fierce about your peace. Sometimes we have to be a savage to protect our state of mind, to protect how we feel, to protect our sanity, and to find serenity amongst chaos. And I feel that because it is the fourth house and Aries is here, it is about being forceful if you have to, to protect yourself. Like I said, you've protected many, many in the past. It's time to make yourself a priority. All right. You are experiencing the North Node in Aries. Like I said, being fierce in order to find your peace with the South Node in Libra in the 10th house. You've prioritized other people's peace for too long. You would take on all their tasks as long as they were happy with you, no problem. I'll take one more. North Node in Aries is taking charge of your life, no longer seeing yourself as a side character. In your own life, you are realizing that your life has been, you know, basically feeling like you've been on this treadmill and you just can't keep up. You're jumping off, you're taking charge, what means more to you and making decisions based on what means the most to you because Chiron is also here will 
it is transiting your fourth house, letting go of needing to be liked and validated by the public eye. Pluto energy shakes us to the core. For many of you, South Node Libra, some of you found your validation in always being busy and always succeeding. That's how you found your identity. Now with Pluto going through first house, this is, it's canceling out old ways of viewing yourself. Some of you may be changing career paths. For others of you, you're realizing you got what you wanted, but it's not what you need. With North Node in Aries and Chiron, there's almost like this realization coming forefront where you thought your ambitions and career would heal you. And for some of you, you're realizing that that wounded child within you is still in you. You are now becoming this fearless advocate for yourself. Whereas you've been this fearless advocate for everyone else. This year, 2024, you're fighting, but for yourself. These themes will amplify around the eclipses, lunar eclipse in Libra that is happening in March 25th, 5 degrees Libra. So if you have Capricorn placements between 0 to 10 degrees, you will feel this strongly. The focus will be on career and public persona and make more space for what will nourish and feed your soul. Solar eclipse is happening in April 8th, 19 degrees Aries. It's a new start that will lead to gain. North Node as it relates to home, family, and property. For some of you, you'll be moving or enacting more boundaries. For others, starting a new relationship. Jupiter transits the fifth house in the beginning. September 17th is a lunar eclipse that is happening in Pisces in your third house. This is, um, this is new skills. You want to learn. October the 2nd, 10 degrees Libra solar eclipse. New start on the south note with it letting go of what you can perceive this year as a step backwards for some of you you will allow yourself to rest to rejuvenate in order to rebuild the dreams and ambitions that you are more in alignment with now so for some of you guys you're going through this awakening of realizing that a lot of what you thought was very important or a lot of your you know going up the ladder um status and you know business or finances was something that you really kind of obsessed about and you're realizing now like you're taking a step back and you're realizing well yeah I have all this but I feel depleted I feel burnt out I feel um for some of you guys even you know unhappy and it's because the reason why you're feeling this is because your soul is craving something deeper so it's about realizing, hey, it's okay that, you know, a year ago or two years ago, I was so obsessed with career and finances. And it's okay to come to the realization that, you know what, this year, I have other perspectives, I have other priorities. As we continue to grow and we continue to evolve, our priorities change. And it's okay, Capricorn, don't be so hard on yourself. And again, Learn to make yourself a priority for this year. Now, start of the year with Jupiter and Taurus aligning with Uranus. You can feel more creative. Jupiter will trine uh, from 5 to 29 degrees Capricorn in your fifth house. It will align with Uranus in April and activate your fifth house. For some of you, you will have a fling with someone who is so outside of your normal type. It's going to be random and very passionate and electrifying and fun let me tell you if you're not single it can just represent that um maybe you had become a bit you know no <laughs> uh a bit boring and it can indicate that you and your partner will ignite the fun passionate part of you um where it's time to try new things so very um what's the word exploratory type of energy here now, May 25th, Jupiter, 6th house in Gemini, new job opportunities coming in. Some of you are wanting to take care of yourself. North node, 4th um, house, Jupiter transiting your 6th house. You could be wanting to take better care of yourself, changing your diet or being more proactive 
uh, to be the best version of yourself, Capricorn. The end of the year, Mars will be retrograding. It will transit the seventh house, one-to-one -one relationships. You can have flings, um, may come around. <clears throat> you may come around arguments from people of the past. This can include uh, ex-partners or people that you dated or were in relationships with, or if you are in a relationship around this time, you can feel that conflicts uh, are coming up around things that have happened in the past. As Mars will be retrograding in Leo and Cancer, Cancer, your opposite sign that governs other people, and Cancer is a very nostalgic, very uh, much about the past, so it will definitely be bringing old conflicts back into review. Um, the major theme here is can we move past this? And for a lot of you guys, you will. For others of you, it is realizing that um, you can't move past that and it's time to relinquish what doesn't make you feel good, right? What maybe in the past you felt like you were responsible for keeping the relationship afloat. This time around, you may be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not self-sacrificing myself i am not um emptying my vessel anymore so it's about you this year capricorn hello my lovely aquarians let's get into your 2024 predictions a lot of shakeups you guys <laughs> you are healing and using your voice north node in aries third house south node in libra ninth house with north node in aries um you are advocating for yourself, rebelling against family structures that no longer align with your sharing, um, that are no longer aligning with you. You're also becoming more proactive or perhaps sharing more on social media with Pluto's energy. And Aries energy, you're not fearful with controversies or people not seeing eye to eye with you. As you move into this Pluto energy, remain detached around your uh, perspective or whether your perspective triggers other people. As Chiron transiting this sector, uh, a lot of you have been biting your tongue in the past, not wanting to come off in the wrong way. Uh, but this year, your understanding also with Aries is speaking up for yourself, North Node aligning with Chiron. So it's almost like a healing with this sector for some of you um, that haven't been speaking up for others. It can even be like not speaking up with your siblings or family members um, as the third house does rule over these arenas. Jupiter will be in Gemini May 25th to December 31st, 2024. Now, it is a fellow air sign like you, so it trines any of your Aquarian placements, which brings luck, growth in the fifth house, creativity to get your ideas, um, getting your ideas out. Some Aquarians are writing this year. Some are sharing more on social media. Uh, some are learning a new skill that allows you to express yourself towards the later year or the later latter year. Um, this expansion of fun while Jupiter and Gemini, it will try and Pluto in Aquarius. So a lot of you are tapping into your power via a method of creativity. For others, it's stepping into leadership roles through vehicle of your creative expression that aspect exacts in june when jupiter and uranus in your fourth house some of you can be working on beginning to get um gain at home for some online businesses or starting a business from home gemini governs the hands some of you are learning a spiritual practice that uses your hands like tarot uh for instance with your ruler being in pisces spiritual mystical intuitive and jupiter in gemini fifth house you're feeling more creatively inspired you will also be having more fun is what i do want to mention jupiter is squaring off with your ruler in august and december ensure that you or that your fun uh isn't cutting into your finances or financial goals too much that can be a time where you can be experiencing consequences of that if you don't keep that in check. Now, in regards to love, 2024 will be forcing you to see and acknowledge certain connections that you are evolving beyond. That can be relationships, partnerships. Pluto and Aquarius from a house um, perspective, 
that is the first house of self. Anything in first house of self is always opposite to the seventh house of others. So your own transformation can be echoing with your relationships. Some of you may be called to release outdated connections. Um, so what I mean by this is as you are, as you are realizing, right, and tapping into more of what it is that your desires are at this point in time, working on yourself and transforming those areas of your life is also going to spill over when it comes to relationships because first house echoes the seventh house. So what does this mean? This means that uh, if you are in a relationship and a lot of the things that you're trying to do or you're shaking up may not fit well with your partner or they may have issues with that. And if that's the case, it's almost like you are having to go over uh, or a review of the relationship and can we move forward? Um, is it you know best for both of us to uh, continue trying to grow together or are we so different and so disconnected that it's best we part ways around this time? Now, um, however, with Jupiter entering Gemini at the end of year, this is a great time to start dating. If you're single or recently became single, you can be dating multiple people, finding a new zest for life for those with Aquarius placements between 0 to 21 degrees. Um, Jupiter in Gemini will try your placements, will be a time where you're more magnetic and you're more visible Aquarius. So if your love life has been a bit stale, that's not going to be the case for 2024. Now, these themes will be amplified around the eclipses, March 25th, April 8th, and October uh, 2nd. The other eclipse that is happening in September um, is a very important one, but it's not necessarily for 2024. It's more of a like foreshadow energy of what we can expect or what themes we can expect for 2025. Now, like I said, it's a foreshadowing what your theme is going to be for 2025. North Node in Pisces will be activated in your second house of finances. As with Saturn, good things come to those who wait, or should I say good things come to those who put effort, Aquarius. So keep your nose to the grindstone and make shit happen. All right, my lovely. All right, my lovely Pisces. Let's get into your astrological alignments and the predictions for you for 2024. Now, one major thing that you're going to find yourself experiencing in 2024 is self-sufficiency. We see a preview of this on September 17th with the lunar eclipse in your sign Pisces. Throughout the year, the North Node will be in Aries, but North Node does not enter your sign. You will be the main character of that transit in 2025, as that's when uh, the nodes change and it will go into your sign. But we are getting a glimpse in September 17th, 2024, as <clears throat> through this process, uh, so how eclipses work is basically new moons or full moons are essentially located by the nodes, right? And even though the north node will still be in Aries in September, this lunation is close enough to the north node that they are technically conjunct. Thus, the eclipse of this full moon eclipse will be foreshadowing of what work you're going to be doing or what you're going to be going through in 2025 during this coming lunar cycle. So um, if you learn the truth about certain people around you or that may be close to you around this eclipse um, or overall throughout this year, I want you to know that that information was given to you from the universe and your spiritual support team so that you can step into a cycle where you're being more independent the cycle you are moving into, there can be a theme of having to be more radically responsible over your life and to understand that you are going to give yourself what you want. You're going to make your dreams come true. It's about no longer waiting on other people to do things for you, more so taking charge. And that preview lunar eclipse in September 2024 in your first house um, there can be reveals around certain people who have outlived their purpose in your life. When it comes to reveals, it can be heartbreaking in this process. Why? Because 
when we experience certain transits in the first house, um, it always brings about revealing certain things, right? And for you in this transit, it's about revealing to you people around you or people that you may consider very close to you. Um, it's like seeing them in a different light. And it could be, you know, heartbreaking. It's never easy realizing people are not who we thought they were. But this lunation is gathered with Neptune. You have to be mindful around your own delusions of who you imagine people to be. You really need to focus on what is showing up with your physical reality at this time and this year. Your compassion must have limits this year for sure, Pisces. So the North Node in Aries, um, the North Node in Aries, which is your second house, it's about taking charge about your finances, about taking action to put yourself in a better financial position. Some may be going through a divorce or some type of separation of finances where the financial support is no longer available. Uh, for others of you, if you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school, you may find that you're coming or being cut off from your parents. Uh, you'll be wanting to own your life. These themes will be kicking up um, around the eclipses of March 25th, lunar eclipse in Libra South Node and the solar eclipse that's happening in Aries North Node in April 8th. And lunar eclipse in Pisces, like I mentioned, September 17th, and the solar eclipse on October 2nd. Mercury will be retrograding the fire signs. These are your money and career houses, second, sixth house, and tenth house. Um, inconveniences or a shift of direction around what it is that you want to do with work or what you want to do for work. North node is transiting your seventh house, sorry, second house, which is big picture themes around earned confidence. If you go into this year, I'm going to be honest, if you go into this year feeling like you're the shit, uh, Pisces, and I know that, you know, some of you, if you're like in the lighter version, then I don't need to tell you because you guys are the most loving people. But if you're more on the shadow side and you're going into it thinking that you have life figured out, there's major shakeups. So because of Saturn's position, I do want to mention, like I said, if you're going into this year, um, you know, feeling like you're the shit, Saturn will humble you so quick. It's not even funny. It's not about acting you're the best without having to back it up. It's about building and earning confidence, not through arrogance, but through hard work and determination. It's about knowing your worth. North Node going into your second house in Chiron the wounded healer, it echoes the theme about healing what made you feel not worthy instead of pretending to be confident on a superficial level. Second house is how you value, uh, how we value ourselves and this can leak into how we make or spend our money. So keep an eye on that. Now Saturn in the first house, you're taking responsibility and leaving behind old patterns. Um, you're being challenged to see the vision and hold the vision of the person that you want to be, as well as your physical health and your vessel, Pisces. Jupiter transiting your third and fourth house, you're growing. Um, you're growing and it's around communication and getting comfortable saying, saying it basically. With Jupiter going into the fourth house, what is really going to make you happy? It's okay to tell yourself or to find five minutes out of your life to figure out what it is that you want in life. And it's okay to say it out loud. And it's okay to make plans and to keep that focus because that's something you're going to be challenged this year. Um, so with Neptune transiting your first, first house, you're not uh, responsible for others to see, to see you accurately. What do I mean by this? With Neptune transiting your first house, it's going to be important to grow thicker skin. It is not your duty for other people to basically see you accurately. Understand people will form their own opinions. Do not take it personal, Pisces. If people don't like you or if people misunderstand you, uh, it's not your duty to <laughs> it's not your duty to make other people understand you or even want to understand you. Do not set yourself up for disappointment by fantasizing 
uh, things to be something that they are not with Neptunian energy here. Now, Pluto transits your 12th house. It will dip back into Capricorn 11th house. Embrace who people are showing you who they are and then um, around this time. And then going back into the 12th house, you're being asked to take the skeletons out of your closet. Understand how you talk to yourself. Pluto will be here for a very long time. But in June, you may see these themes start to come up for you. So when I say skeletons out of your closet, it is about really internalizing your way of seeing things or your way of seeing life and not keeping yourself small, Pisces. It is about, um, you know, really questioning a lot of the beliefs that you have, whether it's about yourself, self-worth, um, or whether it's about the people that you allow in your energy. It's kind of questioning like where, in what place or in what part of your life did you start to be okay with, you know, people breadcrumbing you or where it was okay for you to, like, where did you find that you started making it a habit to be okay with people disrespecting you or abusing you or in any shape, way or form that is not in a healthy, loving way. So you're realizing that in 2024. And again, you're being unapologetic about it and good for you, Pisces. Um, a lot of growth that is happening here. And again, you're going to be one of the main characters for 2025.